The last few weeks have been absolutely insane. Week 12, we almost choked a big lead, and then in week 13, we had an amazing comeback from behind win. Chad Ryland, the GOAT, of course, putting up some really impressive field goals to win us that game. And now, with a very large lead in the division, we move on to week 14, going up against the Queen herself, playing quarterback for the Monarchs. Oh, it's happened. Oh, it's ha I sounded like I was being pleased. Oh, uh, but Lewis, four touchdowns, one sack, 20 passes missed out of 40, but 354 yards and a breakout scenario. This is the week we've been waiting for. Who is it again? Oh, the 10 and 2 Monarchs. Okay, they're not even just the Monarchs. They're the 10 and 2 Monarchs. Excuse me. A lot to get into, though. As you can see, a bunch of scenarios. We have, uh, you know, some more scouting things to look at. Weekly strategy. I mean, there's, there's a lot. Lewis also has an upgrade. Could even get another upgrade, because obviously he's got the upgrade because of the big boost of XP for the Player of the Week, but... Uh, it didn't really go over as much as it did. I thought it was more than that. But either way, uh, could be a huge upgrade for trying to get this scenario. I mean, things absolutely change at the position if we get a breakout win. You get XP, you get a star dev. The XP needed to go up and overall is uh, lowered. It's just a great time. Connor Wilson knows what we're talking about, right? Uh, but anyways, let's go into the injuries, then look into the roster, and then go into our scenarios because we kind of want to know what we're you know heading into with... You know, a hot opponent, maybe they're like, hey, how do you want to stop him? It's like, I don't know, let's stop the run. And they literally have the worst running back in the league or something. But let's take a look at the 10 and 2 Monarchs. Hopefully you don't have to win to get the scenario, because that already is going to be a challenge on its own. As you can see, their backup quarterback is basically, what weren't we looking at this guy in the draft, actually? Basically, you know, good enough to start for us. Joe Burrow, though, absolutely insane. The throw power is a little low, but everything else is amazing. Christian McCaffrey, they do have a very good running back. Maybe the best running back. Their fullback is a tight end. Their wide receiver is really good in Chris Godwin. They got a really fast uh, wide receiver, too, in Marquise Brown. And then a rookie who is a very high overall at number three, Stephen Oakman. A pretty damn good roster here, obviously. Uh, and then Dalton Kincaid, a really good tight end. Left tackle's amazing. Left guard's amazing. Center's all right. Right guard's all right. Right tackle's all right. So it's all up to, you know, our left side of the line to try and get pressure. Draymond Jones uh, with, uh, you know, decent block shed, decent finesse. Sam Williams, don't know what kind of scheme they're running, but decent power move. DTs definitely could need, uh, you know, use a new DT, but okay block shed, and I guess from Jaron Reed. Joe Tryon kind of looks like a 3-4. We'll see if that's actually the case. Middle linebacker Patrick Queen with Trenton Simpson. A uh, little bit of Ravens players there. What's the coverage looking like? Obviously, a lot of speed, a lot of change of direction, and some decent coverage. Pretty good block shedding, actually, from Trenton Simpson, considering the overall. And this should be a 3-4, a as they've got Khalil Mack on the other side. So, you know, they're going to need to replace him soon. But as of right now, he is very good. Stingley's great. Uh, Steffens, didn't think he was going to be this fast, but he's actually not a bad corner at all. And then number three probably should be Ja'Korian Bennett because of that speed. Daxton Hill, the zone coverage isn't great, but the athleticism is. And then Donovan Wilson, zone coverage is good, but the athleticism isn't. Kicker, not that strong of a leg. Punter, really not that strong of a leg. Could struggle from, uh, you know, distance special teams plays. But let's take a look at these scenarios. Hot opponent. Talk about uh, ending your opponent's win streak. I mean, to be fair, we have a win streak too. Uh, insult them? Can you end their win streak? If you were to insult them, what what would you say? Insult them. Um, you know what? We're building a culture. They're not as good as the couch quarterbacks say. I've been watching the film, and I see weaknesses that I plan to exploit. Could you imagine hearing coaches talk like that? Oh, no. The Monarchs are playing well, and all players will have 10-plus to break tackle, play rec, and tackle for this game. Your team loves the mental games and will have plus five break tackle, play rec, and tackle. Oh. So, I I did a good? I mean, sounds good to me. I did a good. I mean, we're like, even though we're 7-5 now, we are still the underdogs of the league. So, you need to talk like that, I think, to to get the players inspired. But, uh, Jadarius Lewis is coming off a stellar game. Is he in the process of taking the next step? I mean, we sure as hell hope uh, he is. Uh, he's put a lot of work in, and, uh, you know, he just needs to complete a little bit more passes. He's making some really good plays, just, uh, you know, not as consistent as we'd like, but does not say anything about winning the game. 300 yards or three total touchdowns with one or less 
interceptions, and he becomes star. So basically, you're allowed to have one dumb. One dumb, and that's it. But looking at this team, obviously we expected their offense to be pretty good. I'm going to say short pass, because of course, Burrow has very good accuracy. He's not the best throw power, so you'd want him to, to get rid of the ball quickly. And uh, they have McCaffrey, so out of the backfield, short plays make sense. And then they're good at stopping the run, but not so much the pass. I'm going to go with throw it short. I think that's helped us in the pass, and obviously we want to focus on passing as much as we can. As much as I don't want to lose the game, we are going up against a better team. And getting a dev up, but losing the game is easily a trade-off worthy of taking. Before we head on in, though, we have three upgrades. Two of them we'll actually look at. Jadarius Lewis. Did we ever get that throw power upgrade we were looking for? Deep threat. I'm going to actually go strong arm because there's a chance at throw power, but also we do need to get that deep threat up if we can. The deep accuracy. Uh, one to deep, one to under pressure. Two to break sack really ain't going to do much for us, but suppose he does have okay break sack. He's not a bad quarterback. That throw power definitely needs some work, but the dev up, that would be unbelievable that would just be such a dub medium route is that what's under deep play i'm gonna go playmaker i want some uh, juke ability ratings in there too let's see what we get some juke move three to juke move one to catch one a medium route two to catch in traffic what's his juke move now damn it's only 80 wow he sucks <laughs> we definitely uh i might actually go more uh playmaker because juke move is really good for somebody you know after the catch and I don't know. That was a nice little upgrade. Plus three to juke move. Happens again. That'd be freaking busted. And here we are at home for the biggest game, realistically, of this series thus far. A chance to not only continue our win streak and further our uh, division push, but also a chance to get a star dev quarterback on the roster. And you don't even have to do the draft. Jadarius Lewis stole the quarterback job. Has not been perfect. However, he has made big-time throws. He has limited his turnovers more than any of the other quarterbacks on this roster. And, of course, has us in a really good position to make the playoffs. And now it is his time personally to potentially grow into the franchise quarterback. Obviously, Stardev does not guarantee that one is a franchise quarterback, but it sure as hell makes him the front-runner on the roster by a lot uh, to become that franchise guy, at least hold that position the draft is always a thing. Never know what we're going to see. Could get Dev to star here. Never gets a throw power upgrade ever again. And someone in the, the draft is faster, stronger, you know, better accuracy, everything. So we'll see what happens. But, of course, going to be kicking this ball deep. Start this thing off. And it will be the Monarchs football first, of course. And uh, McCaffrey on the kicker turns with him. A little surprised by that. But let's take a look at these numbers. Anything surprising here? Joe Burra. Joe, wow, that is really good, actually. 2,600 yards, 23 touchdowns, four interceptions. That is quite the season. Of course, the more on offense, the better chance we have at getting this as we smoke the run attempt early. Jackson, the rookie, three-yard loss on the play. Wall James against the tight end. Do we have to go against him? No, we don't. Christian McCaffrey, one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, come up. That's that's okay. Two yards gained. You know, it's tough to take on Christian McCaffrey one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, I think we did a pretty damn good job. Only allowed two. And here it is. Third and 11. Chance to get off the field and give Jadarius Lewis first chance with the ball. Try it again. Once again, get that scenario. And Cam Jones does a great job. Plays it very safe, just in case Joe Burrow wanted to get crazy and juke or something like that. And it will be a punt. No first downs gained for them. You know, try to filter the game through Christian McCaffrey a little bit early on. Didn't really work out. And then Joe Burrow forced to just run with nobody open. On the return is Mathis. And speaking of return, if you want the series to return tomorrow, 200 likes and we'll have another episode tomorrow. If not, I might do a rebuild. Not 100% sure yet, but that's really all there is to it. Jadarius might be both if, you know, if you get the 200 likes, it'd be rebuild and that. But either way... Uh, Jadarius Lewis, once again, the completion percentage is really where it's lacking. Just over 50% completion, which is not great. You know, the average in the league is probably somewhere around 63%. So being around 50 to 55% when everyone's around 60-something, it's it's not the best. But we are going to start on the ground with this one. And there goes Rodriguez. Once again, it doesn't need to be yards. He could throw for literally 10 yards this game. But if he has three passing touchdowns or three rushing touchdowns, 
it is a successful scenario. So no point to force it. We want to win the game first and foremost. If we have to lose the game by throwing one more, you know, risky pass for a touchdown, so be it. But as of right now, we are in obvious win now mode. Mac on that outside, but I still kind of like it. And a little hard on that cut move. I, I try to just like angle slightly and it just went. Rah. All right, third and two. We're going to go with this route. I mean, it's going to be a lot on shorter here to be open. And he's open and he drops it. It's a perfect throw. He drops it from the 40 yard line. Could kick a field goal. But you could also not kick a field goal. And that, that, my friends, is something no one really thought about until this very moment. Let's see what we got. First down, wide open tight end. We got somebody holding on to the ball for once, and that is a first down. Jadarius Lewis, not hard throws, but has not missed yet. Could be a quick throw to shorter. We're going we're gonna to test it out. And that is wide open. Oh, if he didn't have to spin. And the worst part is I can't tell if it's Jadarius Lewis's fault or not because... Shorter is a guy that likes to spin around a lot. Looking at the tight end. Looking at the underneath. Run out of time. And that's going to be picked off. Oh, my God. Why did he stop? Jamarcus Bells are injured. So now we can't throw another pick for the rest of the game to get this scenario. I knew I should have threw it away. But I also thought our guy was going to continue running. And I think I did have the tight end, but the problem is the guy was easily going to jump that. But if the receiver actually finished his route all the way to the sideline, you know, he was never going to get to that. And what a tackle when I went against Christian McCaffrey. So, I mean, let's all be honest. We're all sitting here thinking, well, this ain't going to happen. But you you relax, you sitting there. It's, it's okay. We still have a chance. Here comes the pressure. Almost safetyed. Okay, Jackson, relax. You're, like, literally beating the crap out of him, but okay. All right, a little bit of pressure today. Obviously, that was a full-on blitz, but it still existed. And he's going to take the whole shot and nothing but the shot. Not going to worry about a pick because, I mean, it's worse than a punt at that point. I can't believe Burrow even had the strength to throw it that far. It was, like, 70 yards in the sky. But another stop. Obviously, that's a, a, a position that's really tough to get out of. But another stop is another stop. Damn, dude. We've got 30 minutes. 25 minutes. Math? 35 minutes. That's the one. To get through this game without throwing another pick. And like I said, I know. I know. I should have just threw it away. But he's open. I mean, what can I do? The guy is going to get open. And he sells. He just doesn't finish the route. Zach Koontz has been on a little bit of a tear lately. 142 yards with three touchdowns to help get his quarterback this scenario chance. Which, of course... Doesn't look too hot, but we're going to keep on trying because it's not over till it's over. Quick throw again. Okay, it's over. We've there. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. 31, let's run this ball inside. And Beatty will get an easy first down. To the left side, Rodriguez. Good blocking. What a beat. Oh, that juke move is getting fast. It's not seemingly good enough to get the actual break animation, but it is looking pretty good and better and better each week first attempt from the 20 yard line and we're doing our thing again this time i've learned the worst part is it was actually a good throw by Jadarius that caused the pick too if it was a bad throw we would have probably gotten away with it get a lot of players up curl route this could be the interception that seals the fate it will not be it will be a perfect throw for touchdown one of three and you already damn know i was gonna say i'll bench him if we get it but I'm not going to. I think I'll, like, force it if we get the scenario legit. But, you know, like, throw a pick because we're trying to win the game. If that happens, fair enough. But if we don't get the stats, even if we have, like, five touchdowns, 350 yards, but we throw two picks, I will not be forcing that. But if we throw a pick after we've legit earned it, that's a different story. And nice play after the rollout. And the Monarchs are going to get first down. You know, if there's a scenario where you actually had to get the win to do it, then I'd also wouldn't do it. But going for the win after getting the scenario should not be the scenario's faults. You know, and I can't believe we didn't get that coverage. He was on and he just played it too shallow. Kincaid first down. The Monarchs are moving as if all of the other drives we've seen from them meant nothing. It's a completely different looking team right now. Bull rush. Almost club over. Ronnie Shelton has cooked. He has really, ever since he's been revealed as a superstar, has played like a true superstar. I don't know if there's something in there in the water of being a superstar, but like, 
he just looks different. And I don't think he has any abilities yet, or even any good ones at least. Trying to get the club over, and that's going to be a loss of three on the throw. If you're losing yards on a pass play, I mean, you're doing something wrong. Bringing the rush over there. I mean, this is... You know, oh, screen pass. We are out here. Weatherford gunned it. No time to hesitate. They get back to the 48-yard line. It's going to be a punt. And realistically, we should try to block this. Speeds block. Oh, we caught him off guard. No, we didn't. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really think about it. Like, they're going to be kicking it wherever they want to anyways because of the range. 118 yards on the ground last week for Mr. Rodriguez. He had a nice couple of runs in there. Going to go to the play action. Not really getting any help. And he's just going to get blasted. A loss of 10 as the slow backup tight end just does nothing. We are up by 7, but I, it doesn't look like we're going to be extending that lead anytime soon as this drive looks dead in the water already. But a lead is a lead. It looks really stupid to go with this, but you're also not trying to throw a pick or fumble or anything like that. So we're going to run with Beatty, who just doesn't get much blocks inside, but almost outruns him for a massive gainer. Still gains three. And I think it's pretty obvious the direction we're going now. We're also going to go back to Beatty on this as... Uh, you know, we just ran with him. You would think that if we're going to do another play with the running back, we would put in the quote-unquote fresher running back. And wow, good job at the offensive line to just leave him out to die. And I'm pretty sure the saying is like left out to dry or something like that, but uh, no, he, he died. He, he was murdered. Murder's fun for everyone. And that could be picked. That will be picked. Nick Jones. It's too late of a read. It's not that good of a win. And the, the uh, field depth was just too shallow. You're not going to be able to like send that thing to the end zone, you know? Like there's... There's a limit in that range that you're going to have. And misses the throw. A little bit of pressure, kind of, but just a missed throw. Could end up cutting this kind of back left, but this looks pretty good off the snap. And we're going to actually keep it up there. Nice! The juke move worked. Did not mean to spin, but kind of hit that thing so hard. Still 7-7. Seven, 7 Seven centimeters is 7 centimeters, no matter where you measure it. See the play action. And they're shorter. Oh, my. I'm actually kind of glad he missed that throw because number 30 kind of just came out of nowhere. Bad throw will lead to a punt, though. All right, it was a really good punt, but they ended up getting a first down, so it kind of, like, basically just made it a regular starting field position kind of situation. And out there, Cam Jones, five yards gain. I got to say, both quarterbacks looking kind of dumb and bad, but really, Joe Burrow is more at fault for his interception and his struggle so far. He's got a good team around him. And can't get out there. That will be... I can't even switch to him. An easy play to Godwin. Like, let a man get to the damn ball, would you? Like, I would appreciate it, really. 39-yard line. To the outside. Nice hit. Gain of five. All right, they're starting to eat us alive in this short game, which, you know, who would have thought that was exactly what we game planned for, but it's still not really working. I can't get off the line. We're on the running back, and there goes Forbes catching Burrow, trying to scramble, and he just shot out like a cannon out of nowhere. Kind of a hidden blitzer, and that'll be a massive loss. Down 12 yards on that play, which is going to lead to a third and 16. Tough conversion. Neither team really doing their thing on offense. Defensively, it's pretty, you know, pretty decent. Trying to get out there. Shelton kind of gets a push, and McCaffrey's going to gain basically nothing. Punt by the AI. Mediocre. Who would have thought? I'm going to go with this potential look to the tight end. It's not easy. Holds on. Gets blasted. Nearing 100 yards, not really on par for the scenario, but you get a touchdown before half, then we could be. Inside handoff to Lewis, or from Lewis to Beatty. I feel like the guard should have done better than he did, but we gained four. I mean, they're kind of ready for it, but we still have numbers. Oh, the tight end did really well there, trying to juke late, but I was like, you know what? I'll juke late because we'll still get the first down if we don't get it. But if I juke early, we lose the first down. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want a, another third down where we just don't know what's going to happen. So let's not do that. We go to shorter here. Tight end's wide open and a great catch down to the 30. Try to lead him a little bit more to the left. Didn't really work out, but hey, a first down's a first down. Going to go play action. I know we don't really have a comeback route here now, but I'm going to see if I can get Morant. Throw it away. What a reaction there from Jadarius. I don't know how that wasn't grounding, but no grounding. Second and 10. We usually like the... Uh, the slant, I should not be throwing over that pressure. Should have taken the sack there because the one pick and the you know, scenario is gone. But instead of that, maybe also we shouldn't be getting pressured that well. That would also be a decent idea, I think. 
Shorter's open, and once again, instant pressure. It'll be a field goal. Their first play is usually pretty decent, and then the rest of the drive is kind of like all over the place. So second and one after the third, you know, basically first down run. And oh my, Cam Jones kind of got a piece of him, but David Bakhtiari just smoked him. Two minute warning in the second quarter. We're up two possessions as the Monarchs have yet to score. Let's see if we can get some like base pressure. Oh, nice move. Ronnie blasts him. Joe Burrow holds on, but like his soul isn't held on anymore. Maybe by like glue. Gonna run up with Hicks. Kind of overran it. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's got speed. Good tackle, though. Wouldn't have mattered that we moved up Hicks because Hicks was in a hook. It was single high, and, uh, yeah, Nick Jones got beat that time. I mean, you'd argue that even on the pick he was beat, to be fair, but, uh, you know, kind of ran out of room with the boundary. To the outside. Good hit. Be five yards. I mean, clock is not a problem for them, but at what point do we decide to call a timeout? I don't know. I think at this point it's just like... They control this situation really well, and I'm not going to do anything to change it. Call a timeout, and maybe it actually helps them. Whereas there's a really good chance. What a tackle. They're calling a timeout there. That was a questionable one. Where there's a chance that you know they mess up rather than we getting the ball back. Obviously, if we get a stop here, but off the line kind of wins it. And we need to be up sooner than that, but he gets a first down barely. We can see here now they're not really managing this super well, so not calling a timeout. Might be a difference between a touchdown and a field goal, and that ball is whipped to the sideline. Probably good that he didn't catch it, but good for whom? I don't think I even said whom. I think I just hummed. I said, hmm. Sound like a Minecraft villager, and wow. Holds on, breaks the tackle, and now that clock is running. 11 seconds left, 10 seconds left, 9 seconds left. They're holding that timeout. Joe Burrow! Oh, what a hit, but he's in! Joe Burrow takes the hit, survives, and scores. I don't know what the hell Weatherford or whoever the hell that other linebacker is doing. We came up, but we just weren't quick enough. We were there slightly too late. We probably would have forced the field goal as well because they would have called the timeout with like three seconds left, maybe four. Joe Burrow sees the lane. We come in and blast him, but we didn't really get the hit stick we were hoping for. Had to be a hit stick because otherwise he would just momentum right through us. And you never know how many yards you can get on a screen, so I am going to be trying to uh, trying to get a screen pass going here. Maybe get a little bit of free yards to get this scenario, perhaps. Oh my god, there was no need for them to just blind me like that. Tyler Beatty, the last time we did this, they just didn't block for him. We do have a timeout to also, you know, do another screen if we want. There's some free yards. I mean, we'll take that. That's like 20-some yards. And almost, if we had a little bit more time... Could have set up a Hail Mary, which I definitely would not take considering we throw one pick, it's over. But slightly behind par, but we do get the ball at half. So you're you're arguing basically yards-wise. We're almost right on par for 300 considering you know, 120 with one less drive. Next drive, it's you know 180 needed, but an extra drive. So we'll see what happens, but it's obviously a close one, 10-7. to 7. River Hogs versus the Steamers. The Steamers finally win another game. 3-10, and 10, barely beating the River Hogs. Not really much to say about this one other than, damn, that game sucked. 10-7 to 7 for the finale is just pretty disgusting stuff, especially since you know it's not because the defenses were good. It's just the offenses suck. Then looking at the Aviators versus the uh, Snowhawks, who are getting smoked at halftime. 10-2 and 2 versus 7-5. It's kind of similar to our game, but we're actually the ones winning. Orbits versus... The Black Knights and the Orbits barely win. Going to, is it 5-8 and eight or 6-8? and eight? Either way, definitely a big game for them to try and climb back. Burrow on that touchdown run. That's obviously a pretty big highlight for them. And then for us, looking, looking, deciding to throw it. A little dangerous of a pass. Right to Koontz, though. Touchdown. Maybe could have went with the medium throwing instead of short, but... I mean, we're in the game. That's all I can really say. We're in the game. And we're going to stick with what we feel is going to work. Stop the short pass, obviously, because that's really what they've been hitting all game. Rodriguez today, really good yards per carry. Got to get him involved more. And we're going to a lot of screen passes because it's safe and they're not really ready for him. We are a very elite screen pass team. Great cutback. Finds more blockers. And if the receiver didn't get lost, Beatty would have scored. Really good maneuvering and ball carrier vision there into the open field to the 39. I mean, for a second, it looked like they overblocked and we wouldn't have actually gotten out there, but a cutback inside, number 90, couldn't seal us off because he's a D lineman. And the rest is almost history. Big run. 
I mean, this play action is almost never going to work, but we're going to try it anyways. And there goes Koontz, who gets blasted, but gains four. It's just so stupid how the left tackle always loses on that. Also, when the hell did Koontz become 75-yard man? I'm trying to think. He had a couple of decent plays this game, but... He's not really open, and once again, we're pressured. Favorite part is he's out of the zone after one attempt to throw to him. We love it. Can we move Beatty over? Double team Mac. Let's see what we got. That's late. Oh, he should have caught that. It was slightly late, but it was right in the bread basket. They're saying to go for this. Why? I mean, I'm going to do it because they said to. It's just a game where we feel like field goals aren't going to do much, even though it's like a field goal game right now. Inside, it's a great throw. Either way, it worked out. Maybe they just believe we had a great play to, to win it. I'm on the board of like, you know, trying to trying to get this scenario really, you know, just calling how I see it. Is that field goal made a lot more sense? Not that long of a kick, unless there's a lot of wind. And there goes Koontz. That could be caught. And they're gonna say he caught it. Couldn't really tell because the crowd didn't seem that excited. But you know, I'm gonna believe it. I'm surprised they didn't challenge that though, because that was far from like guaranteed in my opinion. This is tough, but maybe with the guy standing up, Beatty will be open. And there goes Morant, who holds on. Touchdown number two, and just about 200 yards in the pass game. That early interception really sucked, but we still could have a chance at this thing. All right, Ronnie. You've had a couple of nice plays this game so far. Can't get off the line this time. The blocks are perfect. Great cutback, but kind of uh, made those two drastic uh, moves. Lost all his speed. Cut so hard there, he just couldn't really accelerate. Let's move over to the left. I think that's where they're going to be moving this ball. Probably on the ground. It's not going to be. Can't get off the line in time. Pretty good defense, and I don't know where he's going. Thankfully, Marquise Brown never saw it either. Marquise Brown probably looked around, and he's like, why is he diving? Oh, the ball. Okay. Oh, what a move. Carl Brooks. And underneath, that's too free. Godwin gets blasted, but not until he gets the first down. It's a pretty good game so far. I mean, we're up by 10 again, but for how long? I don't know. Can't get over the line, and we just hit stick our own guy. I'm surprised he didn't continue to run. Bring the safety over the middle a little bit. And I was going to cut off. Oh, come on. It was a perfect play by us. We contained the cutback left, still accelerated in time, and just missed the tackle. That's why I always go for the hit sticks. You would argue that I over, over hit stick, but I mean, do you see the, what I just saw? All right, you see what I just saw there? Oh, wow, he can't even catch him. It is Marquise Brown after all. Did I do that? I kind of, I mean, I moved him a little bit because I was trying to move him in position, but did I mess him up? Oh, I didn't mess him up. He's miles off, and he just steps up. I figured it was going to be one of those, like, we get aggressive after the snap type of things, but no, everyone just kind of let their guy win. That's a tough throw. Oh, my dot. Coons! I thought he was slipping to the 35. He has put up some very good games lately. That is a beautiful throw. Now I'm on team, you know, just get the touchdowns and call it a day. It's a really long team name. Oh, Mac with the attack blasting. I was going to go with the trap play, but look at this. I'm going to go with a quick out because I might need it. It's a clean look, and he drops it. I mean, that is a really big hit, but still I'm surprised that you dropped that. Every single screen, they got the backup in. I get, like, you kind of want to, like disguise it a little bit but I would like Rodriguez in oh my that DT if he would have been the reason why we failed this scenario I would have been so sad field goal time for Ryland definitely not making the argument to go for it this time I mean I get it was probably mid or some type of mid and that's not the best for stopping the run but all the times I was kind of looking to run they they brought up like six players at the line of scrimmage I don't know what I'm supposed to do the Monarchs down by six could take the lead if they get a touch on this drive I think we're gonna go with an outside kind of move and we get, like, tripled up. Get in there! And I can't switch in time. Marquise Brown, their best receiver so far this game. There's some miscommunications and bad throws, but overall, Marquise has been basically open all day long, no matter who he's gone against. Inside push. Get out there. Try to strip it. Can't. Marquise Brown again. First down. There's no, like, best on best we can do. It's just Marquise Brown's world, and we're just living in it. Switch everyone over. I can get over there in time. Oh, what a hit, and he holds on. you got to be kidding me. The bait was on. Well, we're going to be trying to get into this spot right here. 
And that did not work out. Marquise Brown, yet again. I do got to stop bringing so many linebackers because realistically, like, they're just not going to run the ball. And Marquise again, good hit, though. I mean, I didn't even feel like it was intended. It wasn't. It was supposed to continue running sideline, which is actually what, you know, intercepted them earlier with Nick Jones. We're on the tight end. Oh, it's a perfect throw to the lineman. 22 yards. Who's that? Jonah Williams? There's no shot. Their freaking tackle just ran a wheel route and caught it in stride. Who is this guy? Dan Connolly reborn? What is happening? From the one yard line, getting there with a lineman is crazy behavior. Oh, read option. Oh, that backfired. Okay, Joe Burrow, apparently, uh, you know, the strongest man alive. Who's tougher to tackle? Joe Burrow or Derrick Henry? It's a tough call. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that's a tough decision to make? Oh, that's great, D, and still outplayed. They, with an extra point, will take the lead. Winning the game would be great, but at the same time, 70 passing yards or a touchdown makes our quarterback a star dev. I can't take that risk. Oh, can nobody help? Pretty sure it says total yards, right? So if we ran, you know, 10, 15 yards, that, that helps. A lot of congestion. Could be a blitz. Kind of selling this out for a streak. I should have threw that. Beatty drops it. Oh, no. It's a great throw. Does Morant win the one-on-one? I, I don't know, but I'm going to take it. No way this guy picks this off. Oh, my God. Hit is worth throwing somehow. And the ball was just sent to the moon. I mean, that I saw the world. I saw the life flash before my eyes on that dev up. That ball took so long to get down. The guy was in front of it as well. I was like, yep, there it is. It could be because I'm trying to just knock this out, not throw a pick, get the scenario. But I feel like they have just locked us down. And we just got pushed off our spot. Can't get over them. And he just misses the tackle. McCaffrey breaking off of every tackle. Gates 20 almost broke it for the touchdown. About to be the fourth quarter, down one. Could be worse. Come with a little bit of the heat. And the blocks are sealed. Wow. I have never seen a team block that many players so easily in my life. How is that so easy? I mean, look. They just push everyone off. And, of course, it's not my fault, right, that the, the guy loses to the tight end. I figure he's going to win his matchup. Or just hold him in position, and he just goes right to my spot, and then I obviously give up the gaping play after that. The tight end basically just god-moded. Pretty devastating. Can't lie. Pretty, pretty devastating. There's a tight end. Koontz for 12. He has been the hero of today's game. About half of those yards are Koontz, maybe more. His double move could be kind of crazy, and if not, maybe Morant wins his matchup. Morant's open. It's a little behind him. What a catch, though, to the 41-yard line. 27 yards will do it. I already said it. You just get the scenario before throwing that last pick, and I will force it if I have to. Because the scenario is quote-unquote met. No way. He's covering the running back and just steps back and covers that as well. I don't know how that happens. I see that so often. It's so dumb that that's even a thing. I genuinely don't understand. Maybe I am just making the wrong read. Rodriguez showing off the speed. Gets to the outside. Breaks the ankles. 15 plus for the man. Averaging 10 yards per carry pretty much. Yet getting neglected. I don't know. Maybe just don't show up when we have a scenario for the quarterback. Is it really that tough? I don't know. To the outside. And he gets a piece almost. Rodriguez almost you know, tries to do the same thing on the other side. Still gets 10. Looking a little bit slower on that play though. I don't know if he was juiced or what's the story. But... Let me go with these out routes. Morant, throw, dot, star. Star dev for Jadarius Lewis and a tied game if we get the two point. They're going to review this. Uh, I think it would be the right foot if there was one that was out. I believe the left foot was the first plant. Actually, it was the opposite. I think it was the right foot in first. He, I mean, it looks good to me unless he bobbles it. Looks clean. Two-point conversion. Let's see it. The zig looks clean, but it might just be a bait. Let's go with a streak for Beatty. He's open. I literally floated it because of... And Belzer's injured again. 
I literally floated because I was worried about the pressure causing the bullet to, like, hit the ground early. From the 25-yard line. Oh, outside. Nice. Six yards, but we, uh, you know, limited them as much as we could. Inside handoff. Can't get out there. An easy first down. Once again, we have to make the stop, and there's only seven minutes left. They know that. They aren't going to take unnecessary risks unless, you know, they see an opening. It's likely going to be a lot of runs. Ah, crap. Me after eating spicy food. Nine yards gain, though, on the little throw to the tight end. That looks so simple. I think it was our coverage as well, which doesn't help anyone. On the 46-yard line. Don't know if we're on this or not. Brought a lot of players and just perfectly blocked again. Don't get him, but he does have to slow down and get in there. Once again, we can hold to a field goal, but brought all those bodies right to the spot that he ran and still just couldn't stop it. Teams should be able to run the ball against us, yet they just usually don't. And we were out there, but didn't need to be as Malone makes us stop. Don't really hear his name too often. Loss of two from the 27-yard line. Oh, the running back's open. Got to get back over there. Jackson does a good job of just containing, didn't overcommit, just in case, you know, he got his ankles snapped. You just never know. And I'm going to be bringing the heat here. I think it's a win-win. It's not the best play for stop of the run, but you can usually only allow a little bit on the mid. And we are out here. But great tackle by Nick Jones. Going to force a field goal. See if Mathis can make it happen. Come on, Mathis. Not going to get the block, but hey, a touchdown. Would it get us a lead on the return, Forbes? There's no point not to return at this point. Good return considering no seal-offs or anything. Really unfortunate interception to start this game, but ended up doing his thing and potentially getting the scenario. Try to break it outside. I think that was the best way to break the ankles is go outside of where they step. Fortunately, that man was prepared. He is, he's been around a little bit. He knows how to make it happen. Running back's open. Perfect play, and they just left him. Try to cut inside camp, but that's still a big gainer. Also, over 300 on top of the touchdowns needed. Don't know if I would call this a breakout game, but definitely a successful breakout scenario game. Please. Um, P.I.? We didn't even get to the ball! Wow, that was a terrible call. Or no call, if you will. Well, it looks like the league has their players they want winning. Shorter's wide open. That needs to be a clean ball. Shorter trying to truck forward. Kind of does. Gain 16 total to the 39-yard line. Touchdown would win it. And I don't really see a reason to give them the ball back. So I'm going to play this as, you know, slowly as physically possible. I want to go to the trap, but there's so many players on that side. And Rodriguez, don't fumble. Gains maybe a yard. Screen pass to the left side. I mean, the screen pass is usually really good for us. Sometimes they make a play on it, but usually it's it's pretty safe. And that's a great block. Great pancake there, and Beatty almost loses his career trying to get that first down. His head kind of snapped back. That was scary. Pitch play to the right. I mean, if we double Mac, they don't have the numbers. And that was a lot of effort for a yard or two. Two-minute warning, first down to the 26-yard line for number 26. And this is going to be it. This is going to be the drive. We're going to try to make it the last drive. If we get in, we win. If we don't, well, I think it's pretty obvious. If the opposite of winning, <laughs> you know, it's it's pretty obvious. Oh, that's a pretty good play by their guy. Dropped, but that's okay. Played that positionally to make it where they couldn't pick it. I did not expect that guy to jump the play like that. They look like they're going to give us the run. Which I'm not really sure why. Oh, maybe not. Wow, that was a crazy bait out. Hell, I don't even know if it was a bait out. I think this guy just got in untouched. Morant can get under this. Cuts up field, gains about eight. Obviously, I'm taking that every day of the week to gain a few. Got a double drag look with a potential audible to a uh, run. But I don't like the run audible. Beatty's wide open. And that's a perfect throw. Touchdown, Beatty. Obviously, if I could have taken all the clock out with me and won that way or got the touchdown that way, I would have done it. But if the score is there, I am taking it. Looks like an all-out. We'll see. Oh, wow. And Jadarius Lewis gets injured. You've got to be kidding me. Gets injured in his breakout game. And he is slowly limping. 
slowly walking back to the locker room. You've got to be joking. I mean, it's not going to take them much. They call the timeout as they gain four yards. It's not going to take much for them to get down the field here. we got to make a miracle happen if we want to win this game. And we're out there. That is a huge hit. Kind of looked like he kicked him right in the dick hole. Field goal's warming up. Not the field goal, the kicker. Field goal can't warm up. Underneath is pretty open. He panics and throws it away. I mean, the game could be over right here. Is Jadarius Lewis all right? They're not going to show us. Game could be over right here. Fourth and eight. Is Joe Burrow clutch? Let's go with the speed of Malone and drop back in behind. Oh, that's a dot. They do have a timeout. They're not going to waste it. That is a dot, bro. I can't believe he actually dotted that hard. I mean, I can't. Oh, no. I mean, might as well just let him score. He's in field goal position if, you know, he gets stopped short. Now they're going to go for two. Try to make this a seven-pointer. We have three timeouts, but we have a, a really low chance of uh, getting down the field in time, to be honest. Pick six would be huge here. Uh, why is he not on? And I told them to press. We had the bait on the tight end, so... At best, with 27 seconds or less, we can tie the game up. That is a lot to ask for. And if I had, if I could have got under that, I would have done it. And Jadarius is out. Cunningham is in. I don't know what the injury is, but that is actually scientifically proven to be crazy. And that's a great throw and a really great catch. First down. Could you imagine the legacy that is for Cunningham if this is a big injury? Starts because... Oh, my. my he might have been open. Because Jadarius got injured while becoming superstar. Do you even understand how crazy that would be? They have the leverage on Morant. Let's see if they have the leverage on the tight end. They don't. In behind... And that's Koontz' fault. Koontz needs to go to that ball. The route he is running, the area he's running to, is not very open. Where the ball was, was wide open. React. And that's a great throw. Koontz is going to hold on. I mean, nine seconds left. Can we make it happen? The miracle. With Cunningham back in the starting lineup. That could be crazy. He's going to go right back to Koontz, and he misses the throw. You can't miss that Cunningham. Well, I mean, I think it's a Hail Mary, right? I don't really think there's much more to this. Can you move Morant in, or is that not, like, a, a thing they allow? Well, I guess they're not going to allow it. And he's going to get that ball up there. And it's going to be dropped. We lose the game 39-32. to Not our best final drive. Missed some throws. Had some, uh, you know, miscommunications with the new quarterback coming back in. And unfortunately, we dropped to the more, uh, I almost called them the Morants, the, uh, the Monarchs, but also potentially, didn't get to see it, but potentially losing Jadarius Lewis to a big injury, because, uh, you know, how they obviously come off the field is, although there was Jadarius Lewis right there, how they come off the field is a big indicator of how bad the injury was, and obviously he wasn't looking too hot coming off the field there, but let's, let's see it. Four touchdowns, one interception for Lewis. Completion percentage is still really bad, but, uh, you know, got the scenario. Uh, Cunningham was okay, but he didn't really get much of a chance. Rodriguez was great, but he didn't get to run that much either. Koontz was amazing, but uh, had some miscommunications in there. Beatty with 119 yards and a touchdown. He had a kind of breakout game. You never know. Maybe he gets a dev up. Morant with two touchdowns is great. Could get a breakout there, too. Uh, defensively, sacks. I mean, not a whole lot of base pressure. A pick for Nick Jones, a pick for Stingley. Very even game. Just... Uh, the Monarchs made just enough plays to win that one. A couple upgrades. I definitely do want to see, though, what the story is with Jadarius Lewis. Ronnie Shelton with two to power move, one to block shed. That's an amazing upgrade. 80 block shed, 77 power move. Koontz with the vertical threat. 78 overall now. Really good game. Obviously, back-to-back -back weeks now. I mean, he probably would have gotten a breakout scenario, too, if he physically could get one. Short and medium rod are actually not bad. His catching's really good. Deep rot, I just don't know if that's ever going to be a thing. Tyler Beatty, what a game from him. I mean, he is technically our receiving back, but elusive back upgrades are kind of the GOAT ones, so we're going to go with that. Change of direction, juke move, that is his biggest issue right now. Trying to break tackles after catching the ball or having the ball, and then, you know, change of direction in general. And then Jackson, he's a pass rusher. Want to get that power move up as high as possible. Gets two to finesse move, four to awareness, and one to hit power. I don't know what that is, but obviously he's a goon anyways. And let's see what this injury is, if it is one. Oh, it is one. Okay, that is not fun, but let's see it. Quad tear. Okay, 
Quantair sounds terrible, but he is only out three weeks. I don't even know if we had our bye week yet or not. I imagine we did, but week 15, 16, and 17, he'll be out. It's dangerous, though. Could lose the division because of that. Things are getting crazy, though. I can't believe this series. Like, this series is just... You can't script an injury, right? Like, you could literally put on injuries at zero. Well, I mean, I guess if I put... Team Warriors, uh... Ah, who gives a damn? Uh, but... Yeah, I mean, if I put injuries on really low or something, like, it would have everyone to be injured. Um, but here is the QB breakout. We should get this, even though we lost. Another big day by Jadarius Lewis. Be excited that uh, the direction, uh, you know, he seems to be headed is a good one. And we'll see. Star Dev, and that's it. No Dev up for earn XP, which makes sense, because Star Dev is beastly on its own. But Jadarius Lewis, I can't remember what his XP was. It was something in the 5,000s. And with Star Dev, it's 4,200. That is not bad at all. Does suck that he's out for three games, though, because all those XP weeks could easily get to, like, a 72 by the playoffs if we were in them, because I don't know if we're going to be in them now. I don't know who the QB is. You've got Hendon Hooker, Malik Cunningham, and Fitzsimmons. Is it Hendon again? Because Cunningham wasn't great when he replaced them. We'll have to see. Pre uh, practice is going to be basically preseason again. But anyways, if you guys enjoy this one, I can't, but once again, I can't believe the series. It's just like, you can't even script this stuff. It's it's just crazy. I've never had that happen. Um, but yeah, if you've enjoyed, maybe leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate getting support on the channel. Maybe uh, follow me on Twitter, Jumpy Care. Second channel, PK Plays for Not Man Content. And that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, see ya!